Hello Year 4, welcome to Reading Lesson 2. Before we start, you will need to pause the video and collect your resources. You'll need a pencil or a pen, a whiteboard, a whiteboard pen, your one minute read which you can find on Seesaw, and your Anglo-Saxon boy text pages 104 to 107. And pause the video when you're ready to begin. It's time for your one minute read. Pause the video and as usual ask an adult or your brother and sister to help you with this task. Start reading when the one minute begins. Stop reading when the one minute ends. Underline the word that you have reached and unpause the video when you're ready to begin. Let's complete our do now. Tostig's private chamber was a large room at the top of the palace. On one side was a bed covered with fur and on the other side was a wide window. The wide window was open and Magnus could see the dull glow of torches. So, let's think, what time of day is it? And how do you know? Have a think. What time of day is it and how do you know? Look for the clues in the text and use your background knowledge. Let's see if you were thinking the same thing that I was thinking. Well, I think it's the evening. And I think it's the evening because they're in Tostig's private chamber where there's a bed. But the big clue that tells me it's the evening is that Magnus, Magnus could see the dull of glow torches. He could see dull glow of torches. And you wouldn't have torches lit during the daytime. They would come on in the evening or at night time when it was dark. So I think it's the evening because Magnus could see the dull glow of torches. Today we are going to infer meaning from a text. In order to do this successfully, we need to follow the success criteria. Underline the key words in the question. Scan the text for the key words and underline all the appropriate information. Use clues from the text and use your background knowledge. This will help you to answer your questions completely. It's important that you follow the success criteria. Before we read the main text, we're going to have a look at some vocabulary that will help us understand the text. Remember, this is my turn, your turn. So let's have a look at some words then. Approaching. Approaching. Approaching means to come near in distance. Wearily. Wearily. Wearily means extreme tiredness. Rained. Rained. Rained is to control a horse by pulling on its reins. And this is the reins here that you control the horse by. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Ridiculous means that something is very foolish. Belittle. Belittle. Belittle is to make someone feel less important or less valued. Tensions, tensions, tensions is physical or emotional strain. Let's just remind ourselves how we infer meaning from a text. When we make inferences while reading, we use evidence that is available in the text and our background knowledge to draw sensible conclusions. We need to be detectives and think about what do we know, what clues did we find, what background knowledge did we use, and what can we infer. Let's have a look at this text together. Jake tries to catch a fish. Jake stood on the riverbank. He cast his fishing pole into the deep water. 
He had been trying to catch a fish for many hours. Alex and Dane laughed as they watched Jake throw the fishing line into the water one more time. So let's have a look at the question. What kind of person do you think Jake is? Let's have a think. What kind of person do we think Jake is? Remember, you get background knowledge and evidence from the text. So let's have a look. Jake stood on the riverbank. He cast his fishing pole into the deep water. That doesn't tell me anything about what kind of person he, he is. He had been trying to catch fish for many hours. Ooh, that tells me a little bit about what he may be like. Alex and Dane laughed as they watched Jake throw the fishing line into the water one more time. So, I think that Jake could be a patient and hard working person. He is patient because he has been trying to catch fish for hours and he's not got upset by the trouble or the long wait, so he's patient. And he's hard working because he's not given up. So I've used evidence from the text and my background knowledge to say that Jake is patient and hard and a hard working person. It's your turn to answer the question. I'll read the text once more for you. Jack tries to catch a fish. Jake stood on the river bank. He cast his fishing pole into the deep water. He had been trying to catch fish for many hours. Alex and Zane laughed as they watched Jake throw the fishing line into the water one more time. How do you think Alex and Zane feel about Jake's effort to catch a fish? Pause the video and write your answer on your whiteboard and when you're ready to share your answer, unpause the video. Well done. Let's have a look if you use the same evidence that I did. So, Alex and Zane laughed as they, as, Jay, as they watched Jake throw the fishing line into the water. How do you think Alex and Zane feel about Jake's efforts to catch the fish? Alex and Zane felt that Jake was just wasting his time and he would not catch a fish. So I've used the evidence from the text and I've used background knowledge to answer the question. As I read page 104, you need to follow and underline any words and phrases that tell us how Magnus may have felt, how his brothers may have felt, why the house cars found the altercation funny. I'm going to begin reading from the middle of paragraph 1 on page 104. Pause the video and find where you are in your text and unpause when you're ready to begin. Remember that we have to underline any information that tells us how Magnus may have felt, how his brothers may have felt and how the house cars found the altercation funny. Let's begin. Everyone who came to the gate had to do as he said, whoever they were. Watch out lads, said Hacken one dull afternoon. These two lads look like trouble. Magnus saw his brothers Godwin and Edmund approaching the gate. Remember approaching means coming closer. Their cloaks travel stained and their horse plodding wearily. Oh, can you remember what the word wearily meant? Well done, extremely tired. So their horses have been, are extremely tired. They've been riding them for a long while. Magnus glanced at Hakon who smiled. And then Magnus nodded to the men to open the gate. He stepped out and held up a hand. Halt in the name of the King Edward, he said. Who comes to Thorny? His brothers reined in their horses. Who reined means that they controlled their horses, remember? Is that you, Magnus? said Godwin, peering down at him. Be a good little brother and get out of our way. Who? Be a good little brother and get out of our way. They don't respect Magnus very much. I wonder how that makes Magnus feel. We've been on the road for five days and we're tired, so hurry up. So the brothers are tired and, and that's why they want Magnus to hurry up, hurry up because they've been on the road for a long time and they're not feeling very fresh. Magnus stared at his brother and didn't step back. I say again, who comes to Thorny? 
you must give me your names and state your business here. So by staring, Magnus is causing tension between himself and his brothers. He's shown his authority and strength. So I wonder how his brothers would be feeling. Godwin laughed. Come on, Magnus, what are you playing at? So Godwin still thinks it's a little, little, little bit funny and that Magnus is joking about. Playing, said Magnus, his eyes locked on Godwin's now. This is no game for children. I am the leader of the King's Gate Guard, and I can let no man through who will not tell me his name and say what business he has on Thorny Island. So Magnus is saying, this is no game, and he's the leader of the King's Guard, and he's not going to let any man through. So Magnus again is showing that he is strong, he's a leader, and they cannot do anything without his permission. So I wonder how that would make his brothers feel, because they are older than Magnus. Magnus is younger, and ideally he should be taking orders from his brothers and not the other way around. This is ridiculous, said Edmund. Remember, ridiculous means foolishness. Tell him to stop being stupid, Hakon. I cannot do that, said Hakon, shrugging. He is the Lord and Master. Oh, even Hakon has called Magnus the Lord and Master. So giving Magnus more status and position and his brothers have to answer to him. So this is another place where there is tension brewing between them. There was silence for a moment. And Magnus knew the house cars behind him were enjoying his test of strength. So this is a test of strength between Magnus and his brothers. Who would win? How are they feeling? Are the brothers feeling threatened by a younger brother who's showing his strength and saying he's a leader and he's not going to take any nonsense from them and they have to do what he says before he lets them in? Or... Are the brothers going to ignore him? Let's find out as you read on. It's time for your independent work. I would like you to read by yourselves. Pause the video, continue reading up to the end of page 107. Carry on underlining any words and phrases that tell us how Magnus may have felt, how his brothers may have felt, why the house cars found the altercation funny. Once you are ready to work, unpause the video. It's time for independent work. This task is for all groups. Green and orange group, I expect you to complete the challenge. Write the answers to the questions in complete sentences with capital letters and full stops in your yellow book. Good luck and I look forward to seeing your spectacular work. Good luck, year four.